trouble here at me or anything like that. I, I really want this to be a, this is not going to be me up here speaking and giving a campaign speech. This is going to be a two-way conversation between all of us here. There's over a hundred people here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Standing up in the back, there's uh, still four seats up here. I know it's the front row, I won't call on you too much. But, uh, but I really appreciate you coming out. We're limited to an hour today. We may be able to go over slightly. Uh, so I want to basically, again, leave it open for, for questions and conversations and things like that. I'm going to tell you why I'm here today and why we're doing this town hall meeting. Uh, as, as you guys have been watching all around the country and all around Illinois, Congressional representatives have, have come home for the August recess, and recess is a misnomer. It's really not supposed to be a recess, it's supposed to be a district work period. So it's a time when your representative comes home and gets back in touch with the people of their district. Um, I was hoping and expecting that your current congresswoman, Debbie Halverson, would be doing a series of town hall meetings uh, like many, many other congressional representatives and senators around the country have. Unfortunately, she hasn't done a single one. And we're also finding out now that her campaign has said that they're not going to do any town hall meetings because they just don't have time. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, and, I, I, and I want to put up front, I'm not making this a bashing comment session, but I want to tell you why we're doing this. Uh, but she doesn't have time to do it, but I will mention to you that next week uh, she's having a fundraiser with Vice President Joe Biden in Chicago. So she has an opportunity to go do fundraising for her re-election, uh, but she doesn't have time to come here and listen to you. So what I wanted to do is pull together a series of four town hall meetings. We wanted to do one in Princeton, there's one in Ottawa, Kankakee, and then one in uh, Manuka in Will and Grundy County. We wanted to bring people together to say, you know what, you have a right as a citizen of the United States to have your voice heard. And that's what I want this to be. I'll introduce myself. I'll give you some thoughts on health care, what I think we need to do, uh, some thoughts and concerns I have with the health care bill, uh, of which I've read a good portion of it, and it's a very slow, I'm on page like 600, it's slow reading, because you have to keep going through, like, what did I just read? Have you guys ever read government language? There's a lot of whereases and thereby and therefores, and um, give you my concerns, but I really want to hear your stories. I want to hear, folks, I was talking to you earlier, sir, about some of the difficulties you've had. I want to hear these kinds of stories. I want to hear how this has touched your life, and in some cases, what you think we should do. I'm not going to stand up here and lecture you. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you why I have all the answers. I'm going to stand up here and tell you my view on government, what we need to do about health care, and I want to make this a two-way conversation. And I know the people of Princeton are good, middle-of-the-road Americans, and, and I know there's folks from all over. Uh, I know this isn't going to get out of hand like you've seen on TV, uh, and I respect that. <laughs> this is a town where you still wave at each other walking down the street. It's great. Um, and uh, so, just a respectful opportunity for us to come together and talk about that. So, I'll introduce myself. My name is Adam Kinzinger. I hail from Bloomington, Illinois, and uh, I currently live in Mantino, Illinois, which is on the Kankakee Will County border. I am 31 years old. I know some of you are probably wondering if I was old enough to vote. I am. I'm 31 years old. And I know the other person that represents part of Bureau County is even younger than me, Aaron Schock. So uh, I do beat him in age. Uh, but I'm 31 years old. When I was 20 years old, I was elected to the McLean County Board. Somebody had jokingly said to me, you should run for the McLean County Board. And I took him very seriously. And there was a 12-year incumbent on the board that I announced my candidacy against ran against him, and I did exactly what I'm doing here today. Just talk to people. Be a representative of the people. It's not a career. This is a representation of folks like you. So that's, what, that's the message I took out. And I was elected to the McLean County Board at 20 years old. Did that for four years, was re-elected in a competitive primary and general election, and that's all about when 9-11 hit. I've always had a passion to protect my country. And when 9-11 hit, that's when I determined as much as I enjoy politics and representing people, I need to go fight to defend the country I love. So I joined the United States Air Force, and for the last, since 2001, really, I've been a pilot in the United States Air Force. That job has taken me to Iraq three different times, 
It's taken me to Afghanistan twice, and it's taken me to other areas around the world where we do interesting things, and much of which I can't talk about. But one thing it's brought home to me is the real determination of the American spirit to do the right thing and to believe in the democracy and capitalism that's made this country great. And it's good folks that can have different opinions but are determined for the common goal and common good of the United States. I've loved my job in the military. And I never thought I'd be back into politics. But what I've seen happen in the last five months has driven me to believe that our country needs defending now from the inside. And so that's what I'm doing. So I decided. United States Congress, and that's why I'm here today with you. Um, again, with the health care situation, obviously that's what we're here to talk about. I have a lot of concerns with what I've seen the dialogue, where I've seen the dialogue go. I believe 100% that we have a health care crisis. If you're a family that is uninsured and that can't afford insurance, as we talked about, sir, that is a crisis to you. I also believe that when we talk about solutions that are going to put a bureaucrat in between you and your doctor, that's a crisis. Yeah. Yes. I believe when we talk about waiting weeks for tests mm. or months for treatment, mm -hmm. that's a crisis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I believe that delayed care is denied care. Mm -hmm. right. And I will tell you as we have this discussion, we may not agree on everything. <coughs> And it's a democracy, and we're Illinois, we all have great opinions. We may not agree on everything. We probably won't. But I'll give you my word today. You will absolutely know where I stand on any issue at any time. If I have a strong opinion on it, you know where I stand. I will not waver. My opponent, Ms. Halverson, occasionally you might know where she stands, and that's usually right after she votes on the bill. So I think it's important for you to have a congressional representative that you know that you can come to, find out exactly where I stand on different issues, how I'm going to vote, whether you agree or disagree, you know, and I think that's very important. So anyway, I believe we do have a health care crisis, but I believe there's ways we need to fix it. I don't believe creating a cash for clunkers government health care kind of program where it's like going to the DMV every time you need to go get a cough checked up on is the answer. I don't believe our country can afford that. Right here I have in my hand the 1,017 page bill that is the Democrat proposal for health care reform. In the first few hundred pages I noticed that a business, a small business that decides to keep its private health care insurance, but is not up to what the government deems as their standards as determined by a commissioner and a board of 18 board members appointed by the President of the United States, wow. completely partisan. Wow. If your business is not up to that minimum standard, the business will be fine. Anybody here that's a small business owner or a farmer, listen to this. If you have employees, you will be fined $100 a day for each employee that does not have what the government deems adequate health insurance until it's corrected. If you have three employees, that's $9,000 a month of government fines. That's a scary thing. To me. It's scary when we talk about government control. So how do we fix this problem, in my opinion? One of the things we need to do is allow doctors in the country to quit practicing defensive medicine. Right. How do we do that? If any of you have been to the doctor and you have a shoulder pain, you're probably going to get an entire MRI because he or she wants to make sure that you didn't stub your little toe and that can't come back to bite them in a lawsuit maybe for 10 or 20 million dollars down the road. That's right. If you put tort reform limitations, so limiting the amount of money on pain and suffering that somebody can sue for, there has to be avenues for people to be compensated for malpractice. Mm -hmm. But if we start to limit that, doctors don't have to pay defensive medicine anymore, don't have to practice defensive medicine. I have a cousin that's an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, that's the only medical background I can ever